What's going on internet? IG here again today. We're coming back with the Linux tidbits, updating you with some of the open source news and other kind of related stuff from around the tech world. So this is the show where I talk about interesting stuff that I've come across in the last week. Uh, and just before we get kick started here, there's a really fascinating documentary that I've been made aware of uh, in the last few days and it's called The Most Dangerous Town. Uh, it's co-produced by Norton Security, obviously they're the internet security company and the reason behind it is they're having a look at some of the most internationally infamous hackers uh, from all over the world but particularly uh, from a little town in Romania that is classified all over the world as the most dangerous town in terms of cybercrime. Um, so it's this little documentary that they put together and it profiles some of the most infamous hackers that have come through the last couple of years. I mean these guys have hacked like former presidents, Fortune 500 companies, probably a few people you know. Look some of the stories that they tell are really fascinating and not only that but even some of them are like still serving jail time and they still manage to get interviews with them which is pretty cool. So it is co-produced by Norton Internet Security, obviously we can all figure out why there but they've been doing internet security pretty well for a while now. So if that tickles your fancy there's a link right here to check out the trailer so definitely go check that out. Just kidding, it's actually a link to the entire documentary. <laughs> Got if you want to see the full documentary, there's a link in the description there that you can watch the whole thing. Uh, it's pretty fascinating and let me know what you think. Anyway, moving on. Obviously, Apple had WWDC 2015. I usually don't talk about Apple conferences because, well, it doesn't seem too related, but one of the interesting, most interesting things in that presentation was the, the amount of applause that went off when they announced that Swift, their programming language, uh, specifically Swift 2.0, was going to be open sourced. The crowd went nuts. I thought this was an interesting cue in terms of a company like Apple opening up something, a programming language to open source. Clearly they want to get a bit of momentum behind it. That's all I'll say about that, but let me know what you think about all of these different news items in the comments section below. Because yeah, interesting move. It seems like big companies nowadays really can't escape open sourcing as a, as a viable licensing option. Not only that, but Apple also talked about their new music service, which you guys have probably all heard about by now. It's kind of another, yet another music stream streaming service that you might have to pay for, but that also means they're going to be bringing an app to Android, um, which is also another interesting move for Apple because it's kind of acknowledging the fact that yeah, they will have to deal with the competition there. We've also seen a new release to Mate or the Mate, or I still, guys, why are we arguing about how to pronounce this? Mate One Mate 1.10. Uh, it's obviously the GNOME 2 fork. It's been undergoing a lot of incremental development to keep it true to the ethos of what GNOME 2 is about, but at the same time provide features and I guess backports of technologies that have become since available in a newer desktops like GTK 3.16 and all that fun stuff. So there is some new features that I will link in an article in the description box below because I don't have time to go through them here. Um, but basically if you like that desktop environment, you're going to like this update because uh, yeah, just keeps building on what a great desktop environment it already is. And also in other Linux news, there is a new, uh, well Dell is pushing a new line of really affordable Ubuntu books that are designed to compete with the Chromebook in terms of price and specs and that sort of thing. Cool thing is, they're running Ubuntu and they're going to have relatively mediocre specs, but what excites me about this is the fact that Ubuntu as a system has much more potential to work well on, on less hardware than what, you know, Windows and, uh, I mean, Chromebooks are fairly light based on Linux anyway, but the Ubuntu is obviously a fully local system that you can use as a normal computer. You're not limited by internet connection at all. So the new Ubuntu books that Adele is shipping are based on their very popular Inspiron line, uh, both the uh, both the 14 inch and the 15 inch. Again, link in the description if you want to check out the pricing and availability of those. I think they're starting out mostly in the States at this point, which doesn't actually affect me at all. But hey, there's that. And finally, what we like to do on this channel is shout out a Linux distribution and a Linux YouTuber uh, right at the end of these tidbits. And uh, so today I'm going to be shouting out Peppermint 6 as a fantastic Chrome OS competitor. Basically, Peppermint 6 just came out recently in the last week. It is a fantastic, really lightweight distribution that could go great on older hardware or really ultra-portable stuff. My advice would be get a really low-cost Windows machine and put Peppermint 6 on it because it's going to fly. 
based off LXDE, it's got a lot of links to cloud-based services that you might be wanting to use, but at the end of the day, you're still using a locally installed system so you can control what's on it and how it works. So Peppermint 6, go check it out if you're interested. Again, the link's below. Also, a Linux YouTuber. This, this guy is one of the original Linux YouTubers in my opinion. Uh, he's been around for goodness knows how long and he's basically the tutorial king. When it comes to finding out anything about any random bit of software on Linux, he's the guy that I've looked up videos in the past and I can't believe it. He's still making them. Uh, Got Blatu. I don't know if that's how you say it, but his channel is amazing. If you're wanting to find out anything about random bits of software, go and check him out. I've got a link in the description below. Um, he's got thousands of videos. Basically, if you want to fall down a rabbit hole of Linux tutorials, then that is the channel to go and find. So go and check that out. Let me know what you think about all of this stuff in the comments below. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus as per usual. If you like what you see here, you want to see more, hit the subscribe subscribe button that's up in one of those corners uh, and mash that like button and uh, that would be great. I will see you guys in the very next video. Peace out ladies and gentlemen. So OpenSUSE 13.2 recently dropped. And basically, it's just a gentle revision on 13.1 being their more stable long-term support release. And I am liking this trend amongst Linux.